Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. At the end of the bed, this is like an old school vlogging setup where it's like 10 things you didn't know about me. But in this video today, we're doing a Chelsea tier list. We're bringing it back. It's been a while since the last tier list. We're going to do two or three of these during the pre-season to show how each pre-season game, and that enables me to fluctuate what I think in my mind Pochettino's squad is going to be, you guys get to give your thoughts in the comments down below, and by the end of pre-season, we'll have a definitive journeyed prediction as to what the 23-24 Chelsea squad is going to look like. We've got four categories build around, which in my head are players that will start against Liverpool. We're literally stripping it down to this. It's not build for the future, it is plays against Liverpool. Keep, loan and sell, based on all of the men's squad minus three goalkeepers, and I've chosen the three that I think are most relevant in the case of they're in the squad most likely to either be in it or not. We start with all three goalkeepers just jumping straight in to the first three tiers. Kepa at the moment is build around. Bettinelli is keep. Slonina is loan. The reason Kepa is build around for now is because all of the indication is that Chelsea won't be in the market for a first team goalkeeper. We potentially may see Bettinelli become a third choice keeper with Slonina getting a high profile loan. I think this is the right move for Gabriel Slonina. Chelsea have got big hopes for his future. I think he's a good quality young keeper and Bettinelli at the age he's at, he's happy to just be sitting there being a good egg in the dressing room. I was really looking for something else there, but I went with egg. Bettinelli's that guy. He's got good energy. Players seem to absolutely love him. Doesn't kick up a fuss. He knows he's not going to be Chelsea's number one. So for now, I'm not sure if I'm 100% convinced about Kepa, but it looks like Poch and the club are. He's got himself big on the wall outside Stamford Bridge now. Kit looks cool as well, by the way. I must say that. But Kepa's one. Bettinelli keep for now. Slonina into tier three, which would probably see Chelsea go in for a second choice keeper in the market. Let me know who you think the calibre or the name of that keeper could be. Moving into the defenders, Benoit Badiashil is currently in the keep category. I keep almost doing the two fingers the other way around, which would be very, very rude of me here. Badiashil is keep because you can't say he's going to start against Liverpool right now. He's injured. He's going to be injured for a while. Obviously, this does give an opportunity for some other defenders to state their claim for starting places in the Chelsea squad. Thiago Silva is build around for now. Not for the long-term future, because that would be ludicrous to suggest. But Thiago Silva, if he's fit and he's ready, he played a lot of football last season, which keeps surprising me to this day, his age. It's, it's no secret. We have to bring it into the conversation. But he's such a quality player. And I think Chelsea, considering how young this squad is, when we look at this tier list come the end of this video, you're looking at players who a lot of them haven't even played 100 competitive football matches, let alone anything else for Chelsea. Silva, at the moment, with Fafana being out for the whole season, is the first choice in that right centre-back position. Will we see Silva eased out of this team this season because he's more compatible as the central defender in a three? Maybe. But that is something we're going to have to see throughout the course of the season. Trevor Chalaba is keep right now. I think Silva starts ahead of him in the right centre-back position at the beginning of the season. But like I said in the video yesterday about the players that Poch must keep after that Wrexham friendly, I think Trev is such a good centre-back. You know, there's, there's so many things that you can say. There's nothing extravagant, but what he does, he does so well. So I think for Chelsea, it's imperative that he's kept for this season. Ben Chilwell is still my number one left back. People will look at Matson's performance, but that was in the left wing position. That's why Matson is such an interesting topic of discussion. For me, Chile is still the best left back option at the club, or sorry, should I say, Benjamin Bloody Chilwell. I don't call him Chile. I call everyone usually by their full names, even if I say it seven times in the same sentence. Chilwell still starts for me. Reese James as well, build around. If this guy is fit, then I think he has to start every game. The issue is, if I was to make a prediction now, I would say that Malo Gusto probably plays more matches for Chelsea this season than Reese James does, just because that injury record ain't getting any better. 
He was sick, he, did, he wasn't injured, that's why he didn't fly to the US at the same time, but he's on the plane, maybe even right now, he's probably landed by now to be fair, unless he's doing a loop of the world. We move into Cucurella. I'm gonna say at this point in the window, I'm selling him, if we can. If Chelsea can get a good offer for Cucurella, Ian Matson has shown me enough. We'll get onto him in a minute. But at this point, with Lewis Hall, Chilwell, Matson, Cucurella, there was such a good footballer in there, but still, he didn't play badly in the game against Wrexham, but then you can't really play badly against the League Two team. Otherwise, this is definitive. He's sold. It's done. If he, if he has a nightmare against Wrexham in the first preseason game, he's out the window. Especially if Matson's scoring two goals playing in the left wing position. But at this point, I would sell Mark Cucurella. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. Price dependent. Chelsea spent a lot on him. His value right now is significantly lower. But how high can we get that bid to be? Wesley Fofana, of course, is key, but we can't do too much about that right now. Alfie Gilchrist, good young centre-back, but I'd loan him. I think at this point, being in the Premier League 2 side, Chelsea's reserves, basically, it's, it's, it's good. It's a good standard of football. But I think if we're looking long-term about some of these centre-backs at the club who could break into the first team, when we're looking at long-term Thiago Silva replacements, if we're looking at players that aren't going to get injured every week, like a Fafana or a Badia Shield, players like Alfie Gilchrist, Bashir Humphreys, loan moves now to show what they can do at a high level, playing hopefully in either Gilchrist, maybe if he can get a championship loan, that would develop him. It's a rough league, it's a tough league. And I'd send him on loan. Malo Gusto is obviously keep at the moment. I think as the season goes on, maybe he cements himself as Chelsea's right back. And I'm only saying that because Reese's injury record scars me. I just can't stop thinking about it. And I just, at this point, don't expect him to stay fit. Bashir Humphreys goes in to tier number three. I think it's important again. He had a good loan in Germany last year. Impressed. He plays with both feet. He's very comfortable on the ball. He looked very sharp as well in the game against Wrexham. But I think playing at a high level, I think in English football, is the next loan that Chelsea should be looking for. Strasbourg, this loan in France, I think when it comes to centre-backs, it's one of those positions that has been over the years known as the hard man position. You look at your John Terry's, your Nemanja Vidic's, that is kind of what you want your centre-back to be like. Going in the Championship, it's no joke of a league. Most of the teams in that championship have been in the Premier League in the past 10 years. So for Humphreys and Gilchrist, my ideal would be seeing a loan to a championship club if you can't get lower Premier League, your Lutons or something like that. Moving into Ian Matson, keep him. Basically, this tier list series will be after the first game, the third game, and the final game against Borussia Dortmund. We're going to update this list and see what changes. Matson is keep right now. Scored two goals. What a start to Ian Matson's preseason. He was fantastic. And I really think that ability to play as a winger, not just wing back, full back, could be so valuable to Chelsea if Mudrick still doesn't bleed himself into English football life here and he doesn't have that explosive start that people are kind of desperate for now because it didn't happen between January and May. Ian Matson is a great option. He's used to English football, he's got experience. Being at Burnley last season in the Championship, it toughens you up. I think Championship loans should not be frowned upon. Malang Sarr, sell him. I don't really see any point. There's Badia Shield, Colwell in that left centre-back position. If we're playing two at the back, that's all we need. We don't need Malang Sarr at the club any longer. Enzo is going to start every single game that he's fit for Chelsea. You spend £105 million on him, you build around this guy. He is an enigma. Chelsea need more Enzos, basically. We need Caicedo, of course, but Enzo's what we need. He moves into the build-around category. This guy is a Rolls-Royce of a footballer. People are talking about Declan Rice. Enzo is that sign-in for us. We already had him in January. He's had time at the club already, and we saw in the beginning of his career at Chelsea just what he can do. He was such an important member of the team last season, coming straight in, from a different league, young age, off the back of winning the World Cup, and he fitted into the Premier League perfectly. He's got everything, and he is in tier number one. Conor Gallagher, at this point for me, is keep. I think Conor has worked a lot on his physical self this year, in pre-season. He looks big, he looks strong, and I think with Pochettino, what Gallagher has needed is consistency in his position. And I think with Poch, he will nurture 
Gallagher into understanding exactly what he does well and putting that into a role in this Chelsea team. I wouldn't necessarily say a position because Gallagher will keep running. He will do a lot of the work that a defensive midfielder could do, an attacking midfielder will do. But the role that Pochettino assigns him, if he executes it, I think he's a big player for Chelsea this season around the squad. Chukwameka. Now, this is an interesting one. At this point, I would loan him. And the reason I would loan him is because Chelsea spent a lot of money on this guy. And I think when you look at the profiles of other midfielders, I'm still confused as to exactly what role Kane Chukwameka will have. I think he's a brilliant footballer. He's very talented. But a Premier League loan, I think, would be massive for him this season for Poch and Chelsea to look and say, well... Okay, that is exactly what he is. That's what he does. That's how he fits into this team. We take him out of that loan into next preseason and he could become a starter if it is really that good of a loan. I would loan him at this point. Tino Andrian, I would sell at this point because some of the other midfielders we're seeing come through from that Wrexham game, again, I must stress, this list will change. It will change after the Brighton game, but the video, the next one will be after the Fulham game or after the Newcastle game. Cesar Casadei has everything. He's got the build, he's got the height, he can drive with the ball, he can run with the ball. And I think when you're that age and you've got so many attributes in your favour, you can arrive in the box, you can score goals. I think this is exactly the mould of player that Pochettino will thrive working with. So I think at that point, when you look at Chukwameka in tier three, I think Cassidy is probably more ready-made to fit with Potts right now, maybe even more than Chukwameka. That's just my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Lewis Hall, I would also keep because I sold Cucurella. So Ben Chilwell, Ian Matson, Hall as a backup left-back, but also at this point in time when we've not made defensive midfield signings, Lewis Hall fits there as well. I was thinking about a loan. I really was. And I'm also thinking about a loan for Santos who is the next player on this list, but I'm keeping him in tier number two for now. Again, this probably won't be what we see. I don't think Gallagher, Cassidy, Hall and Andre Santos all stay in the first team squad next season. But at this point, I'm not just going to make these videos to be controversial. This is genuinely where I stand on it right now, based on the fact that Chelsea are probably only going for Caicedo in the window. I don't see with the way this Caicedo transfer is dragging on, I don't see us just jumping in the market for Lavia as well. I think by that point, he might have gone somewhere else. There are so many good talented midfielders here that as much as we probably need two right now that are ready made, so far, I'm seeing enough. That is what these videos, this tier list series is gonna be all about. Aubameyang, sell, is basically gone through. He's on the way to Marseille. Mudrik is keep. He's not built around yet. I thought maybe when he came in and we saw that 20 minutes against Liverpool, it could very quickly be this guy as a regular starter, guaranteed. I think Pochettino will definitely use him in this next game against Brighton. I think he has to. You've got to see against a better opposition what Mudrik can do. He's been working out as well. He looks a bit bigger, which is going to be important for him with the physicality in the Premier League. Raheem Sterling is also two. I was thinking about one. But at the moment, I'm still, in my perspective, I'm more excited about Madueke. I think Sterling will have a significantly better second season than he did in his first. And that's the Pochettino effect. We saw it in that first half. Chelsea so much more fluid. And obviously Sterling comes on. And for the start of the second half against Wrexham, it was a bit flat. It was probably what we expected from a pre-season game. But he grew into it. Missed a couple of big chances that he absolutely must do better with. But it's the first game. As much as we can praise those who did very well against Wrexham, it's also important for those who had moments of like, what are you doing? That we don't get carried away on the negative side. So with Sterling, it's currently tier two, potential to be number one. Armando Broya is tier number two. We keep him. We don't have enough strikers at the club. And I think with Jackson, from what I saw in the opening 45 minutes in preseason, I think he's going to push Broya. I think between these two, there's so much raw capacity, raw ability between these two players that I think they'll push each other. And there is an option at the moment. If Chelsea don't sign top level elite striker, Broya and Jackson, that battle to who could be the number nine will absolutely elevate both players with a manager 
like Pochettino coaching and tutoring them. Hakim Ziyech, sell. We don't need to talk about him anymore. Noni Madueke right now is also keep. He's competing with a Mudrik, a Sterling, probably Sterling on the right wing, Mudrik on the left, with Matson banging on the door as well. Noni Madueke, exciting player. Needs to work on his final product, final pass, but very excited for him this season. Mason Burstow is going to get a loan. Pretty sure of that one. Angelo, right now, is keep. I am very excited by him. What a second half performance from him. Gets himself an assist too. It was magnificent. It's brilliant what this guy does. A lot of people in Brazil were saying that with Angelo, the final product is still messy. All right, cool. Not Lionel. Like, Messi is in a bit scrappy. Wrong decisions. I didn't see any of that. Pochettino has got into him immediately. And I think that's what Poch is going to do with these wide attacking players that are still very raw. Your Mudricks, Madwekis, Angelos. That final pass has to be decisive. If it's not available to take the player on, you make the pass early. Chelsea did that so well. We cut Wrexham to shreds at the end of that game. So at this point, Angelo is two and hudson Adoy is tier four. I'm sorry, with Callum, we've been so patient. And I think for the benefit of him, with Callum, we have an affinity. He's one of those players that you just can't hate because he's done nothing wrong. But in terms of breaking through, it's never happened. The Leverkusen move wasn't brilliant. There's a reason clubs like Forrest are looking at Callum Hudson-Odoi because sadly, he's not hit the levels that Chelsea thought he would, England thought he would, and that kind of move is needed for him at this point. Nicholas Jackson, tier number two, of course. We just bought him in, starts very well, gets two assists in the opening half an hour of his Chelsea debut. Luke Bright, I love the whole dropping deep thing, getting the ball, carrying the ball, allowing space for runners in behind. I think Nicholas Jackson could be some player. Not getting carried away, but he could. Lukaku, let me have my little moment on this little man, shall we? This guy is basically to a cabbage what a caterpillar is. Just an annoyance, a hindrance. You don't want that. You want to spray a few things on it to get them caterpillars away. With Lukaku, let's get the bug spray out. Let's just zap it on him. When I pinpoint all of the troubles at Chelsea, if we're looking for someone to blame, which a lot of football fans do, and I do it as well, if I'm looking for a root cause, right? Lukaku is as close to the root as we can find when it comes to toxicity within a club, within a dressing room, how it totally disturbs the top of the hierarchy, the management, the staff, the players, those who are not playing. He's a bad egg. Nobody wants him right now. I've not really spoken too much about it other than just throwing out like bug spray comments and under in the sewers, under Stamford Bridge, you know. I hope nothing bad happens to the man in, in life, okay? Just to clarify. But as a footballer, this guy don't belong anywhere near a top club. His attitude reeks. It stinks. It's rotten. And the problem is, he's not actually as good as he believes he is. That's the truth. Yeah, he's scored a load of goals in his career, but he's not, he's not that good. How, how why does he act this way? He's gone. Marrera. Let's move on from Lukaku because he's getting me agitated. Marrera is currently alone for me, based on the fact that I saw more from Angelo than I saw from Marrera. Not all of them are going to be out of state. That's the reality of the situation. And when we look at this list, we finish it with tier one. Christopher Nkunku. Nkunku. I think that's the pronunciation. Nkunku. Kunku. Yeah, I've been told off by a few of you for that one. I'm working on it, all right? I'm going to be Googling it, listening to a few people in different accents, doing it, and I'll come out with my version of that eventually. So... This is the tier list. What a player he's going to be. I think he could be one of Chelsea's most important signings for the last 10 years. That's how good I think this guy can be with the players around him under this manager. So when we look at this here, we've got Kepa, Silva, James, Enzo and Nkunku in the build around category. There is a lot of space for these players in tier two to move up. There are a lot of spaces right now with a lot of quality in this squad to see players become mainstays in this Pochettino Chelsea team. And there is also space for signings right now. There's not too many players left in the sell category. You've got Lukaku, hudson Adoy, Ziyech, Aubameyang is pretty much gone. Cucurella and Saar. Cucurella, I don't think he'll be sold. And I wouldn't be disappointed if he wasn't because there's probably still a great player in there somewhere. I just hope he can find the Brighton form again. We really hope that, don't we, if we can't sell him. So this is how it looks after Chelsea 5, Wrexham 0. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments down below. 
Make sure you're subscribed to GBFC because there will be more tier list videos if you like the aesthetic of how it looks and how we can kind of formulate an idea as to what Pochettino's squad is going to look like. Stay tuned for Chelsea news videos. That's where we will talk about potential new signings, personal terms being agreed, deals being signed, shirts being held. Thank you guys for watching. Come on, you blues.